Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you're all doing fine. Welcome back to the channel. This is the House of Law. Thank you very much for subscribing and for watching my videos, especially the last one, which is the first part of the obligations and contracts lecture. Now, the second part, we'll have to wait for a bit because today, pagbibigyan natin ng isang follower na humingi ng tulong kung paano magbasa ng decision ng Supreme Court at kung paano gumawa ng case digest. Kaya para sa iyo tong video na to, girl. Part 2 of the Obligations and Contracts lecture will be up in about 3 or 4 days. We will prepare it very well so that uh, it will be worth it. I am looking at almost the same duration, so around 1 hour of lecture video. So watch out for that, especially if you're a bar reviewee, a law student, or an undergrad business law student. Okay? By the way, if you're new to this channel, I'm Attorney Al Jumrani and I make uh, videos about the law, about law subjects, and about law-related issues. So I hope you enjoy your stay here at my channel and if you do, please consider subscribing and click that notification bell ding, ding, ding. so that you will be notified in case I upload a new one. So let's begin today's video. Today's video is called How to Read Decisions of the Supreme Court and How to Prepare Case Digests. Ah! So, the first question is, what is a court decision? Well, a court decision is a judgment that disposes a case. It is issued by the court which heard the case. It states the facts, the issue or issues to be resolved, and the reasons for the ruling. Now, there are also orders or resolutions that the court can issue, but they do not dispose of the case. They are called interlocutory orders and they resolve only pending and provisional matters. So for this lecture, we will just focus on decisions or those judgments that finally dispose the case. I'm sure you are wondering why are decisions so long and so full of legalese? Can't it be as simple as, in the red corner is Juan, in the blue corner is Pedro, between Juan and Pedro, the winner is Pedro. Congratulations! Well, unfortunately, it can't be as simple as that. Section 14, Article 8 of the Constitution provides that no decision shall be rendered by any court without expressing therein clearly and distinctly the facts and the law on which it is based. Furthermore, Section 1 of Rule 36 of the Rules of Court states that a judgment or final order determining the merits of the case shall be in writing, personally and directly prepared by the judge, stating clearly and distinctly the facts and the law on which it is based, signed by him and filed with the clerk of court. Thus, lucky you if the case is simple, because the decision will be short and simple. But if the case is complicated, involving several facts, several issues, and several laws, then expect a long, complicated, and hard-to-understand decision. But that's just the way it is. So let's look at the different parts of a decision. Actually, there could be six or seven, but uh, let's only take note of the six important parts. So the first part is the heading, where you will find the court, the case title, the case number, and in some decisions, the date of that decision. The second part would be the statement of the case, which refers to the prior history of the case. Now, the third part is the statement of the fact. The fourth part is the statement of the issues. The fifth part is the ruling or the reasons of the court. And the sixth part is the dispositive portion where you, you will find the wherefore and the so ordered. For our sample, I chose the case of Bax versus Court of Appeals. What is this case about? Let's find out. This is the case of Gashem Shukat Bax versus Court of Appeals. Now let's recall the different parts of a decision. The first part is the heading, and this one is the heading. So here you will find the name of the court, Supreme Court, the case title, Gashem Shukat Baksh versus Honorable Court of Appeals and Mariluti Gonzalez, the case number, GR number 97336, and the date of the decision, February 19, 1993. Now the next part is the statement of the case. And this statement of the case is the prior history or the case antecedents. And here you will find it usually after the name of the ponente. 
or the justice who wrote the decision. In this case, it was former justice and later Chief Justice Hilario Davide. So the statement of the case can be found or can be spread out in several paragraphs. So this paragraph is a statement of the case. Another paragraph or series of paragraphs would be this part, this part, followed by the following paragraphs all the way until the decision of the Court of Appeals. There, the Respondent Court promulgated the challenge decision. You will know that it is a statement of the case because it relates to procedure. Okay, so that is a statement of the case. Now, next part is the statement of the facts. Now, usually the Supreme Court will make its own summary of the facts. But oftentimes, the Supreme Court would also just quote the statement of the facts of the lower court. And this case is no exception. Here, the Supreme Court just adopted the statement of the facts made by the Supreme Court. It is a statement of the facts when it talks about the events or the things that happened outside of the court. And these things or events led to the filing of the case. So look out for a summary or a paragraph that talk about these things, then that would be the statement of the facts. Okay, next would be a statement of the issues. A statement of the issue would be usually in, 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 in one paragraph. Uh, lately, the Supreme Court would use subheadings for its decisions so as to guide the reader where to find the case, statement of the case, the statement of the facts, and the issues. But this case of Bax versus Court, Court of Appeals is something to be read. You have to read it from the beginning to the end so that you will find uh, the issue. So here the issue is where okay, the Supreme Court identifies the legal uh, provision or the matter to be resolved. So, and faced by his second defeat, petitioner filed the instant petition on March 26, 1991 he raises therein the single issue of whether or not Article 21 of the Civil Code applies to the case at bar. Okay, so this is the issue and the succeeding paragraphs would be the ruling or the reasons of the court. So starting from this paragraph all the way down, you will see the Supreme Court discussing the law, discussing uh, damages and uh, discussing morality and all that. Okay. This case is, after all, a case about breach of promise to marry, um, the, the fact that a foreigner took advantage of a Filipina, made her give up her virginity and all that. Okay, so here you will really see a very conservative Supreme Court. At any rate, the last part of the decision is the dispositive portion. And as I have said earlier, the dispositive portion is where you will find the words wherefore and so ordered. So this is the concluding part of the decision, okay? So there you have it. That's a very uh, brief uh, discussion or illustration of the different parts of a decision of the Supreme Court. Now, what parts of the decision should you take into consideration or should you copy paste when preparing a case digest? Let's find out in the next part of this video. So I hope you enjoyed the first part. Now to the second part. This is how to prepare a case digest. Every law student has to learn how to prepare a case digest. It is a basic skill. You will be digesting cases from first year all the way to fourth year and even beyond that in the bar review and even in the practice. A case digest is a summary of a Supreme Court decision. But how short or how long should your case digest be? And what important points should you include in the summary? And should you copy-paste? <laughs> Let's find out. Here are preliminary considerations or guides when making a case digest. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. So first question is, what is the course or subject? Some decisions can touch on more than one course, like say criminal law or procedural law. But if the subject to which this case was assigned for reading is procedural law, 
then focus on the facts and the law on every step of the procedure that was taken in the lower court all the way to the Supreme Court. Because those are the important things to be noted in this case. Now, the next uh, consideration would be under what topic or legal provision was the case assigned? In one decision, there may be many topics or legal provisions discussed. For example, the decision may be under the law on sales, but it touches on several topics or provisions. For example, payment of the price, capacity of the parties, delivery of the property, or even land registration. But if the case was assigned under the topic of obligations of the vendor, then focus on the obligations of the vendor. For example, the obligation to deliver and to transfer ownership. And you can now discard or not mind the discussion on capacity, on price, or even land registration. Okay. Now lastly, is your professor one who is obsessed with the small details? Because if yes, then take note of names, dates, places, amounts, and sizes because they matter and they will be asked during the recitation. So let's now go to the preparation of the case digest. We will use the same case, the case of Bax versus Court of Appeals. Here are my tips on how to digest a case. First, read the entire case from beginning to end. You must understand the entire story. Now, don't rely on digests prepared by others. Well, you can use them, but only after you have read the entire case. Because if you just rely solely on the digests of other people, then you will be missing out on important details or matters that could be asked of you when you recite the case. Next is after reading the entire case or while reading the entire case, take note of important facts, issues, and rulings. Case antecedents may also be important, especially if the case deals with a procedural question. My rule of thumb is that if it piques your interest, then it is important. Now, if you're using your computer to make the digest, you can copy paste these facts and case antecedents. Next, narrow down your notes to those that relate to the subject or topic to which the case was assigned. Write your digest starting with the title of the case, the facts, the issue, and the ruling of the court. Edit and revise if it is too short or too long, focusing on the matters that are relevant to the subject or topic to which the case was assigned. And finally, read before you finalize or print your digest. So now let's go to the case at hand, and the case is Box versus Court of Appeals. So as I've said earlier, the antecedent facts can be, or the, the case antecedents may be found in the first few paragraphs, but we are more concerned with the facts. So the facts can be found in the summary or the ruling of the trial court, or usually it's in this part, or in the ruling of the Court of Appeals this part okay this part all right now after taking notes or summarizing the statement of facts of the case or of the court then as I've said look for the issue and here the issue is where the Supreme Court will begin to discuss the rules or the law okay so here the issue is whether or not article 21 of the civil code applies to the case at bar now as I've said the Supreme Court would flex its muscle when discussing its reasons for its ruling. And you will find it quite a long read. And the challenge is how to summarize this. But as I've said, take notes, narrow down your notes, so that finally you can end up with the important rulings that relate to the topic or the subject or question to which this case was assigned. Now, this case would usually be assigned under human relations of the civil code, particularly Article 19, 20, and 21 on good human relations or the abuse of right principle. So, look for those rulings, doctrines, or pronouncements of the court that 
interpret or that apply these articles, articles 19, 20, and 21. Okay, so this is the case. Now, let's look at a digest that I've made for this exercise. Okay, so this is my case digest. Gashem Shukat Box versus Court of Appeals. GR number 97336, February 19, 1993. Facts. Lu was then 22 years old and working as a waitress in the Gupan City, Pangasinan. When she met Gashem, a 29-year-old exchange student from Iran who was studying medicine in the Gupan, the two fell in love and Gashem later offered to marry her. Marilu then introduced Gashem to her parents where they expressed their intention to get married. Marilu's parents then started inviting sponsors and relatives to the wedding and looked for animals to slaughter for the occasion. Marilu and Gashem lived together in his apartment where they had sexual intercourse but their relationship went sour as Gashem began maltreating Marilu. Gashem then took back his promise to marry Marilu, telling her that he is already married to someone in Bacolod City. Marilu filed an action for damages for Gashem's breach of promise to marry her. The trial court ruled in favor of Marilu and awarded her 20,000 in moral damages. The Court of Appeals affirmed the decision of the trial court. Issue whether or not the promise or the breach of Gashem's promise to marry Marilu is actionable. Ruling. As a rule, a breach of promise to marry is not actionable, but it falls under a violation of Article 21 of the Civil Code which provides that any person who willfully causes loss or injury to another in a manner that is contrary to morals, good customs, or public policy shall compensate the latter for the damage. Here, Gashem made his promise to marry Marilu in order to get her to have sex with him. Marilu was a virgin before she met Gashem. She would not have surrendered herself to Gashem had Gashem not promised to marry her. Gashem's blatant disregard of Filipino traditions on marriage and on the reputation of Filipinas is contrary to morals, good customs, and public policy. As a foreigner who is enjoying the hospitality of our country and even taking advantage of the opportunity to study here, he is expected to respect our traditions. Any act contrary will render him liable under Article 21 of the Civil Code. Here, the Supreme Court affirmed the decision of the Court of Appeals and the Trial Court awarding Marie Lou moral damages and attorney's fees. So that's it. That's the digest of Baksh versus Court of Appeals. Well, it takes some practice, and uh, if you constantly read cases and digest them, even though you are not required to submit them, but at least it's good that you have a digest and uh, you know a reference just when, just in case you need to check on these cases later on during your review, or even when you are in practice where you need to cite a ruling or a doctrine, then it's good to have a you know a compilation of case digests. So I hope you learned something today, especially on how to prepare a digest. If you enjoyed this video, please drop the like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell so that you will be notified in case I upload a new video. Again, laging tatandaan, isipay buksan, alamin ang batas.